pointing in that direction. So every so often you'll see us look in the direction of where that wind is coming. We'll go, the wind will come in waves, actually. Right now, very calm. Even though you see the wind, it's very calm considering what it was just a few moments ago. So strong it can actually push you along. And we do know that Florence hasn't made landfall yet, so we expect it to get a lot stronger. Uh, we can tell you there's, there's rain, but we expect even more rain to come and fall throughout, not just today, but as Florence hovers over the Wilmington area. It's taken a good blow. They had to evacuate the beaches, as you know. Now we're getting the, 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 the storm is coming ashore, and you can see actually how strong these winds go. This is actually not a strong wind. We've had a couple ceiling fans that are right where we are that actually fell. There was a, a, a sign at a hotel that actually broke off its mooring. We can tell you the best thing is to stay inside and continue to monitor us all, both on TV and online. That's the story right here in Wilmington. We're at the riverfront, aptly named, of course. Richard Vane, we'll send it back to you. And I know, uh, Richard, kind of as you were mentioning, trees blowing, people can't see them because the, it's dark out. So the fact sure. that we're seeing these effects in the middle of the night, when of course it is pitch black, Richard, we know that you went to a spot where you and our crews will stay safe, so we'll keep checking in with Richard. All right, let's go to live pictures right now, also from Wilmington. This gives you an idea of the winds and the gusts they're seeing right now. We also know just in the last few minutes, according to the AP, that the eye wall of Florence is beginning to reach the actual coast. Actual landfall considered once the center of the eye hits the coast. But make no mistake, it, either, either way, folks, this is already serious, already tons of damage being seen in that corner of the state. And as we know, we've got hours, literally hours ahead of us days for the folks here in Charlotte, so stay with us. We also want to give you a live look at the streets here locally, just now turning 420. This is a live look, I-77 at the John Belk Freeway. A few people making their way out. It was busy early, early this morning when we were coming in around 2 a.m. A lot of people traveling around our area. Keep in mind, many people heeding those warnings, evacuating from the coast and making their way right here. We'll be right back.
going to be devastating Daylight. across that entire area. That's very sad what's going on as we talk about. Uh, it's, it's a Category 1 hurricane that does not matter. This is a major hurricane with devastating damage along the Carolina coastline. Uh, landfall sometime between now and maybe 7, 8 o'clock this morning is a Category 1 hurricane. Tracks across pretty close to Wilmington, about that same area that we've been talking about for day after day. It's a slow moving weather system. Once again, wind sustained about 90 gusts to 120, moving west northwest at about 6 miles per hour. Start to take a little bit of a turn back to the southwest. You can see it only gets. Uh, uh, just to the west of, say, Myrtle Beach as we get into this evening, then a slow mover as we see tropical storm force conditions just south of Shaw. That's tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, winds at 45 miles an hour, then does take that turn and moves away, but that's definitely going to have an impact on the Shaw metro. This is, this is pretty dramatic right here. The rain, the heavy rain, the feeder bands, and you can see it's just slamming into the Carolina coastline. The storm surge, the heavy rain, the amount of rainfall that they're going to get. Once again, we're still talking about the potential for 20 to 30 inches of rainfall. You can see some of the heavy rain that continues to fall in those areas from around Wilmington all the way up into the areas around Emerald Isle as you get up into Havelock, as you get inland all the way up towards Greenville, North Carolina. You can see some of the rainfall totals once again almost seven inches of rain. That's in Cape Carteret in Carteret County uh, near Beaufort, North Carolina. You can see just to the east of Havelock almost eight inches of rainfall there. Once again, and we're talking about a, a wind feel of about 90 miles an hour, sustained winds gusting over 120 miles an hour, moving west northwest at six miles an hour. One of the major concerns, storm surge. That's devastating. Let's talk about that with Chris Mulcahy. Chris? Hey, thanks a lot, Larry. And look at these wave heights already. This buoy reading 20 feet and it got as high as 30 feet. So all that water has been lifted up and it's crashing towards the coast. And it all depends where you are in the hurricane. And it's usually that right front quadrant that is going to be the worst. And what that means is the forward motion that it's moving. It's right in this sector where you follow the rotation of the storm and you follow the storm direction. That's where the winds are the strongest. However, it's in this quadrant right here, right around Wilmington that the storm surge could be the worst as that wind is wrapping around clashing with all the water and the worst part about this is it comes in two waves the water comes in and then it has to come back out and that's about a 48 hour process so a lot of communities already underwater because of how much rain is going to be around and the big thing with storm surge is typically you have normal sea level the ocean surge will come up with high and low tides but that's also another problem that we have since it's sticking around for so long long and it's so large, we have multiple high tide cycles, which is only going to make the storm surge uh, a little bit worse. Let's head back to the desk. All right, Chris, thank you so much. And be sure to keep it right here on NBC Charlotte as we continue to bring you the latest Hurricane Florence updates on air, online, and on our NBC Charlotte mobile app. You can download that for free in your app store. Be sure to follow our social pages as well, and we'll be right back.
reaching the coast. Now, if you've been in the Carolinas anytime at all, you know Highway 12. That's the famous route there in the Outer Banks. Mm -hmm. And you know it also washes away anytime there's any sort of major storm. It looks like that's happening again. Nags had already seen heavy winds there, and that's why we find Ali Weatherton this morning. So, Ali, give us a sense of what conditions are like where you are. Good morning. Conditions continue to change. We were out here for about an hour and a half so far. The wind has definitely started to pick up. The rain has stopped. It's kind of dark out, but I want to show you kind of what we're looking at. I have this flashlight, so I'm going to try to see if we can show you what we're looking at. Down at the end of the pier, those waves are just crashing really bad at that pier. Now, we don't really see too much storm surge right now, but that's the main issue that we're seeing is those waves crashing down. There's also a lot of sand hitting and going into the parking lot here at the Jeanette's Pier in at Nags Head. Now, uh, the wind has picked up all night long. We were uh, sleeping in our hotel and I was waking up about every hour hearing that wind at my balcony door actually open because the wind was just that bad. Now, this is the conditions we're seeing right now. We're not really seeing any rain, but we are seeing these heavy winds. And like I said, the sand is just pushing onto the parking lot. We are kind of worried that our live truck might get stuck. So we, um, this is just what we're seeing. So we'll send it back to you. Ali, we can clearly see how windy it is. We know you're kind of planting your feet in the ground there. And we also know it's not high tide. So when high tide comes around, it'll be a much different story. We do know Ali's on a delay, so we want to go ahead and free her up. Thank you so much for your report. Carlos. All right, Larry. Heavy rain, possibly tropical storm force winds in the Charlotte area. Is that possible? Details in your forecast right here, right after the break. landfall yet. Florence now expected to hit between 5 a.m. and 8 a.m., but we do know that eye wall is starting to creep along the coastline. Larry Springle joining us now with a look at what the conditions are like right now. Larry. Hey, good morning. It's getting closer and closer. It really doesn't matter because th these winds are intense. The rain is intense. The storm surge is intense. We're talking about storm surge anywhere along these coastal areas between Ballhead Island all the way to Beaufort, North Carolina, between 5 and 11 feet. That is a wall of water coming from the ocean right into houses, right into areas that could be a, about maybe 500 uh, feet away. That's the devastation with these storm surges that we've seen time after time. But you can see the extent of rainfall that continues right there in the eastern part of the state. Also, we're getting some winds gusting to about 70 miles per hour at Wilmington, 76 at Jacksonville, and 75 mile an hour wind gusts over at Cherry Point along at the uh, Marine Base there, 52 mile an hour wind gust at Cape Hatteras. So this is something we're going to keep an eye on. The, the intense wind gust combined Combined with the amount of rainfall and the storm surge. That's why we're seeing devastation. We've already seen these horrible reports coming out of Newburn, North Carolina, around Little Washington, over towards uh, areas around Moorhead City. So we do have in our area, pretty close by, that is a severe storm possibility, the possibility of even tropical storm force winds from Lancaster all the way over towards areas around Chesterfield County. More on what's going to happen later this weekend coming up, but right now the impacts right here in the Charlotte area. What can happen? Let's talk to Chris McKay about that, Chris. 
Hey Larry, the big story, the rain. The amount of rain that we're going to see here is going to exceed 5 to 10 inches and maybe even above that mark, especially further off towards the east where we have the first effects of Florence moving in. So you can see the entire area under a flash flood watch and there's different times. I know it says 8 a.m. there. A few areas to the west are at that time. But this is extending anywhere from the southeast to uh, around Chesterfield County. And that ends during your Sunday evening to as late as Tuesday morning. So we're expecting flooding through the weekend and well past that. So that is going to be the major story that's going along with this. But we also have the potential for some stronger storms that are going to be moving through. So you have to expect maybe a few hit or miss heavier batches of rain that some areas will see a little bit more. So the main impacts, we have a chance for some higher winds, mainly some winds around 40, 45 miles per hour. So some weak tropical storm winds that would be really, I would say later on tonight heading into tomorrow. You can see for your flash flooding, we start to pop up into those pinks. That is meaning that our best chance for flash flooding when we see most of the rain will be Saturday night heading into Sunday. And we do have the slight tornado risk that would be in between some of the bands where you see a little bit of sunshine and more storms roll back in. Not many will see this, but we've already had some tornado warnings just northwest of Raleigh. All right, Chris, thank you. Well, a city we're certainly keeping a close eye on this morning is Wilmington. It's expected to take one of the hardest hits from Florence and it's already seen a lot of rain. NBC Charlotte's Richard Dedane is out there live for us this morning. Richard, in just the last 30 minutes, it looks like it's getting a little bit harder to stand out there, getting a little bit windier out there. What's it like? Yeah, just within the last few moments right before we came uh, to you guys, I actually, the wind blew. I was not being dramatic. It blew me away. But I want to apologize. Throughout the morning, I'm going to be looking in the direction of the wind because objects are being blown this way. We have to be very careful. That's one of the things we do. We make sure that we have a secure area to report from. We are making sure that our camera equipment and, 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 and our, the folks in front of the cameras and our photographers are all safe. We're paying close attention, so forgive me if I look this way. Wilmington is getting hit very hard because we have to tell you that there are three possible three things that can happen when you have a hurricane condition. You can have that strong storm surge, you can have the heavy winds, and then you can have that constant rain. Well, Wilmington is going to get all three of those. Most areas might get one or two of those things, but Wilmington is going to get all three of those. That, that, that surge, very high, very much concerning to folks out here. They say this area that we're actually on floods with just a heavy rain. So can you imagine what's going to happen today when this, this uh, when Florence makes landfall? So we can tell you that that's the situation right here in Wilmington. And you can tell every so often the winds really pick up. This isn't a strong one. This is not a strong one. We've had much stronger and we expect it to get a lot stronger. So continue to watch us and we'll continue to give you updates. We've been speaking with emergency management officials who say that right now the best thing to do is that stay inside, stay safe, and pay attention to your local news. And that way is the best way to get updates. And we'll continue to do that for you. That's the story, guys. We're going to send it back to you. All right, Richard, thank you. We appreciate it. I mean, our viewers at home appreciate what you're doing to keep yourself safe out there. Because as you mentioned, it's only going to get worse. Exactly. So Richard's in Wilmington, North Carolina. Now we want to go to Myrtle Beach, pretty much a ghost town this morning as we take a live look at the shoreline there. Many people got out of town earlier this week. There are still, though, some who decided to ride it out. NBC Charlotte's Mark Boyle is live in North Myrtle Beach. So, Mark, has your shot changed at all? Is it getting any windier like we just saw for Richard in Wilmington? S certainly is getting windier around here, Rachel, and the rain is starting to pick up, but not the same conditions because we're still about 20 miles south of where that leading border, uh, the border of the hurricane is. The last live shot we were up higher, I wanted to come a little lower here to show you. The storm surge is expected to be above my head later today or into tomorrow. It's supposed to get worse as we go through the weekend. And once the rain starts out here, the one thing emergency officials have been trying to tell people, the rain is not going to stop and that surge is only going to pick up and grow. They have issued a curfew that's in place until seven o'clock this morning. I've only seen one or two police officers out here and those strong winds are continuing to pick up here in North Myrtle Beach this morning. We'll send things back to you. All right, Mark, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. And coming up, our Hurricane Florence coverage continues with a live report from Carolina Beach. Could we possibly see record-breaking rain across the region? We'll take a look at those chances right here right after the break.
Pinnacle Beach. And folks, this picture says it all. It's a little chaotic, we realize, but it gives you a sense of what things are like right there in Wrightsville Beach. And we want to turn now to Larry Sprinkle to get the update. Larry, explain mm. to us what's happening in that live shot because it's really obviously hard to tell. You're getting, you're getting some winds gusting over 70 miles an hour right there at Wrightsville Beach. Combine that with the heavy surf, the storm surge, all that's going on. This storm system is so bad that last night a TV station in Uber, North Carolina had to be evacuated while they were on the air. The two meteorologists who were left at the station literally had to walk off the camera and leave their radar loop going. But the, that station now off the air because of the devastation from this hurricane. You can see the amount of rainfall that's going to be tracking in those areas already anywhere from about five to eight inches of rainfall along those southeastern coastal sections of North Carolina. More will continue to fall as we're getting some uh, high winds gusting well over 75 miles an hour from Cherry Point all the way to Jacksonville, North Carolina. And some more gusty winds coming into our area. We're getting some wind gusts locally anywhere from about 25 to 30 miles per hour. More about what's going to happen right here coming up in just a few minutes. All right, as Larry mentioned, both North and South Carolina coast going to get hard by this storm with parts of North Carolina coast already, as he mentioned, seeing devastating floods. NBC's Jay Gray is at Carolina Beach for us as the storm is getting ready to make landfall there. We still have some time. So, Jay, what's the situation, situation like by you? We haven't seen this shot yet. Hey, Rachel, Ben, well, the attack from Florence has been relentless here over the last several hours. Take a look at the conditions right now. You can see sheets of rain being pushed by a wind that has just been very severe, like we just heard gusting to about 90 miles an hour at times sustained at well over 50. And these are conditions that are going to continue for a day or more here and really across the entire region. Understand this storm is still off the shoreline about 25 miles or so from where we are right now and moving at about five, six miles an hour. So we've still got the most intense conditions on the way as this storm closes in on the coast and then as it pushes through it's going to be very slow it's going to stall for a bit and it's that rain that's going to cause problems we already have severe flooding in several areas so this is shaping up to be uh, an historic attack from this storm ben and rachel and it's so interesting to see the different shots as we have crews throughout the coast and the difference in the backgrounds and just small locations sure. you know small small distance between locations jay we appreciate you thank you so much here at Charlotte, of course, folks scrambling to get last-minute supplies. We're going to have a live report on where you can still stock up. We also want to give you a live look at the streets in our area. This is 77 northbound at Tyvola Road. That shot a little glitchy, but you can see quite a few car lights making their way out very early this morning. That's what we've been seeing. We'll have more updates when we come back. Stick with us.
But Larry, I gotta say, it was a little disappointing yesterday to be out and about and hear people say since it was sunny, they didn't think there was a hurricane here. Mm. So yeah, I mean, how that, can that, you just that, reinforce how That was really, we talked about the calm before the storm. Yeah. Yeah, we take a look at what's going to happen right here in our area. Very important to uh, take a look at what's going to be a part of our weather picture over the next several hours and right through the upcoming weekend. High winds, certainly a possibility as we, as we get later in the, uh, in the morning, we start to see those winds picking up. We're getting some winds gusting to about 25 to 30 miles an hour right now, but that does increase steadily, and that continues right into Sunday. Flash flood, I'm really concerned about this. We're looking at the potential for a lot of flooding here in the Charlotte area. Things are calm right now, but over the next 24 to 48 to 72 hours, the cumulative amount of rainfall we get is going to cause some major problems here. Tornado threat, there is always during these hurricanes the potential for some isolated tornadoes. Then we get into the power outage situation. That's going to be a problem as well. That could last for a long time. We heard the folks from Duke Power talking about that. Once again, here is that radar picture. Heavy rain, heavy bands of showers tracking along the Carolina coast. Now remember, this storm system is only moving about five to six miles an hour. As long as it sits there, that means more and more rain pounds those coastal sections anywhere from, say, Ballhead Island all the way up to areas along the Outer Banks and in between all that. Uh, we've seen the pictures from Newburn. We're going to see more of these incredible pictures coming out of those coastal areas, and it's just exactly what was predicted how bad it's going to be. These are some of the estimated rainfall totals. We're talking about anywhere from about three and a half all the way up to eight inches already. More will be added to that as we take a look at a total of about almost seven inches in Atlantic over towards areas around Swansboro over six inches, Havelock almost eight inches of rainfall. In our area, this is uh, the Charlotte metro area, we're looking at the potential for some very strong storms here. There is a tornado uh, situation possibly and also the potential for tropical storms here. That's a tropical storm watch in effect. Lancaster, Chesterfield counties, and then you go over to Pageland, Chesterfield, that is a tropical storm warning in those areas. Future cast, we take the radar, it just sits off the Carolina coastline, starts tracking in our direction. You can see the heavy rainfall. This is uh, this afternoon, 5 o'clock. The heaviest hasn't reached Charlotte yet, but devastating rainfall east of here, all the way along Highway 74. This is Saturday morning at 3 a.m. We'll start to see those feeder bands tracking towards the Charlotte metro area. Saturday about 6 a.m., some heavy rain starts to move into the Charlotte metro, and you can see this train of rain that starts to track towards the region. That's when we start to see the heavy rain. It really starts Saturday night. Sunday, I think, will be a day where we're going to see periods of very heavy, drenching, flooding rainfall that will continue through Sunday afternoon. You can see this is late Sunday afternoon. More rain across the Charlotte metro area than more rain for the mountains with the potential for situation up there for landslides in the North Carolina mountains. Uh, record rainfall reports coming back to, to the Charlotte metro area 2008. You can see 8.41 inches back then. The all-time record, we could easily surpass that in the Charlotte area. Check your seven-day forecast for today. Uh, everything is okay this morning as far as rainfall. We're going to be rain-free this morning. Get some gusty winds out there. Later this afternoon, a chance of showers. Tomorrow, rain starts to track into the area. Sunday, very heavy rain. The potential for strong thunderstorms as well. We get into Monday, more rain. Even Tuesday, we can still see some showers out there. So something to pay attention to. But this weekend, especially Saturday afternoon through Saturday night, all day Sunday and all day Sunday night. That's where we see some very heavy rain. And we could have in this area some terrible floods right here in the Charlotte metro area. So stay tuned. We'll update that situation. Such an important yeah. message for our friends and family and viewers here in our area who think they're not seeing the effects yeah. yet. Larry, thank you so much. Okay. Ben. Rachel, thanks. And we're going to get back out to our reporters on the coast. But first, here in Charlotte, folks, of course, scrambling to make sure they have all the right supplies. As Larry mentioned, that storm is quickly going to move into our viewing area in the next couple of days. NBC Charlotte's Danny Spiewak, live from the Lowe's that's there on South Boulevard. And Danny, a lot of stores completely wiped out of those essential items because we've been talking about these things for days. So hopefully people have stocked up at this point. 
Yeah, and a lot of the stores, whether it's Lowe's or the grocery stores, they've been trying to get the shipments in as fast as possible. And uh, like you mentioned, you know, with uh, the, the clock ticking for the effects of Florence coming our way, this is really the last day for people to stock up. And generators have been flying off the shelves at places like Lowe's and as well as, uh, you know, a local hardware store that said yesterday 78 generators were sold in five hours. So that's kind of what we're dealing with. There was another Home Depot that said they sold out of generators twice last week. So generators batteries flashlights those are the things that are very common when uh, you know power outages are expected those are the things people are stocking up on and we were checking in with the Lowe's Emergency Operations Center last night they're tracking how they're getting their shipments in to make sure they've got product to sell to people here on this final day we're trying to get the trucks as close as we can so that when the storm passes this way we can bring the trucks in immediately to stores as soon as we're able to get the re-entry authorization and we know in terms of food, there were also a Walmart and other stores that were reporting being short on bread and water and those sorts of things. So they're also trying to get those shipments in as quick as possible. Back to you. Hey, Danny, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Good information there. All right, we want to take a look now. Myrtle Beach bracing for Florence this morning. We will have a live report on the conditions down there and a live look at Myrtle Beach when we come back. people heeding those warnings about getting out before the storm hits. Which is really a good sight to see in an empty airport. NBC Charlotte's Mark Boyle live for us in Myrtle Beach. This How are the conditions getting out there? Well, things are certainly picking up. I think we are now in it at this point as the storm slowly moves its way into North Myrtle Beach. You can see those palm trees there to give you an idea of the wind and how strong it is. In our next live shot at 5 o'clock in about 12 minutes from now, we're going to go stand on that street, going to protect the gear. That's key. You lose the gear, you're out of the game. But we're going to show you a little bit, a better idea of how strong the wind is whipping through North Myrtle Beach and these rain bands, they are certainly pounding this area. The big concern comes later today as that rain rain continues to build and then tomorrow is the storm surge six feet of it that is why people have been told to get out of this area we are staying three levels above the uh, the parking deck here to make sure we are safe we will see you in just a few minutes at five o'clock here on NBC Charlotte as we continue our coverage for you guys live from North Myrtle Beach we'll send things back to you yeah protect the gear but most importantly we should say protect yourself and your photographer yeah, we as do well know, yeah I mean, we do know the crews are doing that all across the coast though and it's interesting because Mark isn't seeing what Richard's seeing right now, and they're pretty close in 
Yeah, yeah, you know, well, 40, 50 miles yeah, away. Yeah. Yeah. So that, because one, you know, you have Wilmington that close to the eye of the storm, so they're getting the brunt of the winds and the heavy rain. And in fact, you take a look at the picture itself, and it's pretty dramatic what's going on as we check that out right now. Floodwaters, terrible situation there. Yeah, and they are beginning to fill the streets. We've seen gas stations like this one with the roofs ripped off and dangerous, dangerous storm surge. Rachel Brown, join us now for a look at our continuing coverage. Thank you, Ben. You guys have been doing a great job. I was watching our coverage the first hour, and we're learning of more than 150 people waiting to be rescued in New Bern. Storm surge of up to 11 feet along the coast, and we're still awaiting landfall. We've got so much more as we track this monster storm next at 5. As we take a look at that radar picture, pretty dramatic indication of the amount of rain that's slamming into the Carolina coastline. Newburn, North Carolina is a bad situation there. We've been hearing about the need for rescue of some people stranded there in Newburn uh, with the Noose River. You can see uh, some scenes right there along the Newburn area. They're going to see devastating flooding there already happening from Moorhead City to Newburn to Wilmington all the way up towards the Outer Banks. Feeder bands of rain tracked into the area already as much as nine inches of rain in some of those areas that will continue to fall throughout the morning. In addition, winds are gusting over 90 miles an hour uh, with this hurricane. Now category one doesn't matter. High winds, storm surge 11 feet. And, and, and Larry, one of the problems that you mentioned before is this thing's going like six miles an hour. Yes. So people jog at six miles Absolutely. an hour. Absolutely. Yeah, and, so and that's not a good thing. It's going to take forever for that to even make landfall. And as long as it sits there, it picks up that moisture and just dumps it right in to the Carolina coastline. And it's just sitting on top of these people in yeah. these cases for hours. Yeah, and, and you know, the situation is not going to change. It's going to get worse. I'm really afraid to even see the pictures when we see a daylight. Once along the, the sun comes daylight. up, it's going yeah. to be such a different you know, the right. folks from the Today Show there, they're going to have some dramatic pictures. Our folks are out there covering it, so we'll have more dramatic pictures from the coastline. We do have crews spread out. We have Mark Boyle in Myrtle Beach. We have Richard Devane for us in Wilmington. We're also going to have Evan West out on the coast as well, giving you a live look at the streets. I'll have a full check on that here locally. Stick with us right now for Wake Up Charlotte. The Carolina coast. We've heard reports of a storm surge. Get this, as high as 11 feet. Think about that, folks. You're looking at live pictures right now out of Wilmington. The rain really coming in sideways at times. The eye of the storm expected to pass right 
over that city. Good morning. Thanks for staying with Wake Up Charlotte. I'm Ben Thompson and I'm Rachel Brown. The eye of this hurricane just now right off the coast there in Wilmington. We're expecting it to make landfall sometime between five and eight o'clock this morning, and it is the flooding in New Bern and the rescues that is the biggest problem right now. Right now we have teams spread up and down the Carolina coast tracking the conditions as the, the category one storm moves towards us. Let's begin with Larry Sprinkle and Larry. You just got that all important 5 a.m. update. Yeah, that update uh, shows exactly Exactly what's going on. Uh, this uh, this is a devastating situation there along the Carolina coastline. Uh, winds sustained at 90 gusting to about 115 miles per hour. Very slow moving storm system moving west northwest at about six miles per hour. As the lines it sits there, it just makes it more devastating for the folks along the Carolina coastline. We get to this afternoon around two o'clock, uh, maybe right on top of Ballhead Island at that time. Winds sustained at 85 miles per hour. It takes that turn off to the west southwest and then impacts possibly will be the Charlotte area as tropical storm conditions maybe late in the afternoon tomorrow all the way into Sunday. This storm system is going to hang around for several days here locally and that doesn't bode well for us as we take a look at that radar picture once again there it is sitting just to the east of Wilmington North Carolina heavy rain as much as eight to nine inches already between Ballhead Island and Beaufort North Carolina we have some big storm reports that are coming in right now let's get the latest from Chris Mulcahy Chris yeah thanks a lot Larry new burn new burn that's what we keep on bringing up water rescues due to that storm surge have taken place and there's still 150 to go as the most recent report and we saw reports up to about six feet, but earlier this morning, even closer to midnight, that was about 10.1. So bad situation here. Looking at rain around the area, 3.2 inches, four and a half, but the water is now starting to rise because it all connects to the ocean and then a little bit upstream over six inches of rain. So that's why all this is just equating to bad situations. Another storm surge report up to 10 feet right here just south of Minnesota Beach and heading close to the coast. We're starting to get some wind reports as well. But then we also have storm surge already up to six and a half feet and note the peak of the storm surge hasn't even begun. So this is only going to go up. So some of these will be over 10, even close to 15 feet. I would not be surprised. Here's the biggest gust that I've seen so far. Hurricane force gust. That's cat Two, 99 miles per hour at Fort Macon, sliding a little bit further out in the outer banks. Cape lookout at 96 miles per hour. And we're starting to see a lot more of these reports up and down the coast. This is going to be littered with storm reports just over the next few hours, and especially over the next day or so. Let's head to our morning commute with Rachel Roller. All right, Chris, thank you so much. The good news here by the state line where we've been seeing a whole lot of activity is still moving up to speed. It is definitely busier, though, than normal, so keep that in mind. It's going to be an active couple of days. Now, hopefully, when we really start to see the bad effects here locally, these roads will clear out. People will stay home. There's no reason to be on the roadways. You can see no incidents reported at the moment. As far as your drive times, if you do still have work today, you can see everything up to speed out of Rock Hill, out of Kannapolis, out of Gastonia, and out of Monroe. I'll have a closer look when I come back then. Rachel, thanks. Right now, the eye of the hurricane just about 25 miles off the coast. This is what it looked like overnight in Wilmington. The driving wind and rain leading to potentially dangerous storm surges. NBC Charlotte's Richard Devane is live this morning in Wilmington. And Richard, you've been in that spot for at least an hour now, probably more than that. What are you seeing in terms of changes there? Yeah, I, the winds are getting stronger. The winds are getting stronger. And, and as Ben talked about just in the last few moments, you're seeing how that rain is coming down sideways. I don't know if you can see that uh, right now it is it's actually calmed down a little bit. But about 10 minutes ago, flash over in the distance, transformer. Someone has lost power off in the distance. We can tell you that's one of the concerns that, that, that emergency management officials say that they expect a lot of people to be without power. And Duke says that when you lose power, it could take as many as a couple weeks for them to uh, get your power back on because they have to wait out this storm. And as you can see, every so often, it gets really, really strong. I'm looking at a tree in the distance. I'll send you some video in the next half hour. But I'm looking at a tree in the distance. It's, it's shaking it like it's a little rag doll. That's one of the concerns also with all of the water hitting the ground. There will be a lot of trees that are going to be uprooted. So it's very important to pay attention to what we're telling you today and stay inside. And I have to admit, I have to keep looking this way as the wind blows. Don't want anything to hit us. We're trying to be as safe as possible. That's the story. We'll send it back to you. R Richard, give us some idea about where you are at. Well, give us some bearings of where you are at in relation to the rest of the town of Wilmington right now. Ex exactly. We're in the downtown area of Wilmington, uh, right off of the riverfront. 
This is where they have a lot of the hotels, and actually, this is where we're standing. We're standing actually in the front of the in, of the convention center. The convention center actually butts up against the water. Very nice location. Very solid building built for stuff like this, and it's very protected. We are about eight miles from from the beach, from Wrightsville Beach, just for perspective. And as we drive, it, we could tell it was a very empty, desolate area. That's good news because people are staying off the streets. Richard, thank you so much. Please be safe out there. And Wilmington is not the only place getting hit hard overnight. Take a look at these videos just into the NBC Charlotte newsroom. Cities like Bellhaven, New Bern, Moorhead, all seen devastating storm surge. And like we say, folks, that's video taken at night. Yeah. Just wait until it's daylight. It's not, it's not going to be good. The town of New Bern tweeting overnight that 150 people currently waiting to get rescued. We know 200 people who did not evacuate have already been rescued. The area dealing with extreme flooding and storm surge. Right now it's estimated 10 feet of storm surge being blown in by the storm from the coast. Cars, some homes almost completely underwater. Overnight, some people are trapped on their roofs or in their cars. In some cases, just it's just too dangerous to send in any emergency crews. And also take a look at this video coming in on Twitter from Bellhaven, North Carolina. Look at that. You can see the storm surge almost completely covering the first floors of some homes there. The water coming from the Pungo River that opens in the Pamlico Sound. And take a look at this. This tells you everything you need to know. This is from Topsail Beach. Overnight, the winds and rains causing this gas station canopy to collapse on its side. The canopy there falling to the ground, blowing across the parking lot right there. So we've been telling you about this for days. We've been talking about it all week. This storm is absolutely massive, folks. The hurricane force winds stretching 80 miles wide about 75 miles down the coast from where we just were. Now in Myrtle Beach, people there see the impacts of Florence. That's where we find NBC Charlotte's Mark Boyle. He joins us now live. And Mark, you're starting to see conditions, but I mean, it's important to see it. Say, we're still hours out of the real impact for where you are. Certainly is. I mean, there's a big difference when you're 40 to 60 miles, and that's where Richard Devane is to our north. We're in North Myrtle Beach right now, and the winds certainly have picked up around here. It's not raining too bad right now, but that's expected to change very soon. And the big concern around here, the reason the folks in this community, the leaders have asked people to get out of here is because of the storm surge that's expected to plague this area with four to six feet at some point this weekend, possibly as early as tomorrow. Ben and Rachel. Your, your shot has changed drastically since we cut in with this coverage at 4 o'clock. How far are you away from the coast? Well, let me show you. My photographer is way back in the distance, and I have a chance to show you. You see this, this white fence right here behind me? Just about 75 yards or 100 yards, the length of a football field. That's where the water is, and that's where the beach is. So at some point, the water is going to rush in this direction and just flood this community. That's the big concern. So we, of course, will be here to give you guys live coverage throughout the rest of the morning. But that storm surge and rain and that pounding wind is expected to continue now that we're in it as this storm moves on shore. Things are changing quickly. Absolutely. Mark, thank you. All right, time now, almost 5.09. Live pictures right now of Wilmington. It's beginning to see the brunt of this thing. Let's bring in Larry Sprinkle. And Larry, we're still saying the actual eye, as you see behind you, mm -hmm. still, uh, still a few miles actually off the coast. Explain to us why that matters so much. Yeah, it's about 25 miles. The, the, the strongest storms are in that wall right there, the strongest, the highest winds and the most devastating part of any hurricane. Uh, so right now, about 25 miles from Wilmington, landfall, where could landfall be? And you know, a lot of folks are obviously interested in that particular part of the storm system. And as we zoom in and show you from Doppler radar, Surf City, North Carolina, Sneeds Ferry, little communities right there, it could possibly make landfalls as moving west-northwest, maybe around Surf City. And this little barrier island right here, that can completely be flooded over. You've got the storm surge, you've got the overwash, you have the high tides. That's a dangerous situation right there. Some of the ra latest rainfall totals we have right now, Emerald Isle, almost seven inches of rain. Ran Havelock there near the Marine Base, about eight inches. You can see Cedar Island, over eight inches of rain. They could add another possible ten inches to this in some of those areas. More about what's going to happen to the Charlotte Metro area. Could we see some severe weather here? We'll check that possibility coming up in just a few minutes. 
right, but taking a look at the streets, a lot of you still have to go to work today here locally, so we want to make sure you stay informed as well. As Larry was mentioning, we're not going to see the effects just yet this morning here. So 485 at West, a lot of our roadways were very busy out there this morning, so I want to make sure you keep that in mind if you do have to get somewhere. If you're traveling over the state line this morning, out of South Carolina, across state lines, into Uptown, you are up to speed from SC98 as well, also from Billy Graham Parkway. Now keep in mind, Billy Graham Parkway, of course, not too far from Charlotte Douglas, where they're having delays inside the airport, in the sky, and of course on the roads around it. Ben. Here in Charlotte, one of the biggest concerns is power outages. Coming up in a live report, how Duke Energy is working around the clock ahead of Hurricane Florence. NBC Charlotte. And as we go to break, let's show you some live pictures downtown Wilmington. You can see some of the precip precipitation falling there. Also, the signal also jamming up as well. Complete coverage all morning long. We've got about 10 crews spread up and down the Carolina coast, bringing you the latest on this breaking situation. The storm is moving slowly, but it's making our way here. It's about 20 miles, 25 miles from making landfall. Larry's full forecast coming up in a little bit. And we're going to get right back out to the coast in just a minute. But first here in Charlotte, some of the biggest concerns, as we've told you, flash flooding and power outages. Duke Energy working around the clock ahead of what is a historic storm. Officials telling everyone to be prepared without electricity or da for days in some of those cases. NBC Charlotte's Ruby Durham joins us live this morning at Bojangles Coliseum. And Ruby, that's where a lot of power crews are getting staged. 
Yes, Rachel, crews are ready and on standby to jump into action. Just take a look behind me at the long lines and lines of trucks. These trucks actually came in from Florida and the Midwest to help Duke Energy. I'm told once they get the call, around 20,000 crews will be out and about ready to help when the storm hits. Duke Energy is anticipating mass flooding and down power lines to cause widespread outages. Energy crews expecting millions of people to be in the dark, possibly as many as 3 million. This hurricane is supposed to be a heavy rainmaker and crews say the longer Florence sticks around the harder for energy crews to get your power restored but as soon as it's safe they're going to hit the ground running our people are battle tested there's probably uh, nothing they haven't seen we've been to puerto rico uh, we were stored from irma in about 10 days in florida Right now in North Carolina, nearly 280,000 people are without power. Here in Charlotte, it's the calm before the storm, but I hope you have your batteries and your flashlights handy because Duke Energy says once Florence makes her entrance, it's going to be lights out for a lot of people. Live for NBC Charlotte, Ruby Durham, back to you in, studio, in the studio. Another good reminder, Ruby. Thank you. All right, let's get back to the storm and its current location. Larry Sprinkle, join us with the details. Wind sustained at 90 miles per hour. Category 1 hurricane does not matter what the category is because right now, Heavy rain, gusty winds, flooding all along the Carolina coastline as far inland as many of the, the rivers there. You have the Noose River, the New River, all the way down into areas near uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. As you get into that area up towards Moorhead City, the Outer Banks gusting up to about 125 miles per hour. Baldhead Island here, Wilmington, Jacksonville, Beaufort, this entire area covered in water right now. We'll zoom in once again, show you the eye of the storm right here. As you can see, this is Surf City, a little barrier island right there. This could actually make landfall, maybe near Surf City, within the next little while. Those rainfall totals, again, already estimated totals well over 8 inches over at Havelock. You can see just to the south of Cedar Island, over 8 inches of rainfall reported there. These are the uh, latest wind gusts. We're getting winds gusting over 80 miles an hour at Jacksonville. 62 mile per hour wind gusts in Wilmington. 68 at Cherry Point, over around Hatteras and uh, Mitchell Airport there. 52 mile an hour wind gusts. 24 mile an hour wind gusts at Kill Devil Hill. So we're getting the high winds. We're getting that storm surge anywhere from about 5 to 11 feet. We're getting the high tides and all that comes together just to make it a very devastating situation. For the Charlotte metro area, we're going to start to see those winds picking up as we get through the day today. Flash flood potential as we get into the weekend and the isolated tornado threat is also there. Power outages, a major situation. Let's t talk more about the situation with that and what's going to happen around our area coming up later on. Here's Chris Mulcahy. Thanks, Larry. The biggest thing is how massive this thing is. So we talked about the hurricane force winds. Well, that's only going to be really in a select part of the storm. So Larry brought up the eye wall and the interior part of the eye wall. Well, that's really the calm of the storm. But here's where the peak winds are really just around it. And that's where we're having sustained winds at about 80 to 90 miles per hour. But we can't forget about wind gusts. We've already had wind gusts up to 99 miles per hour. That's the biggest one that I've seen. They could exceed 110, close to 120. As as we work our way close to the coast. Hurricane winds at 74 miles per hour plus. This is 140 miles wide. So look at how much of the coast that that's covering. So that's sustained winds at that point. And when we're talking more uh, about the tropical storm force winds, that is 39 to 73 miles per hour. Look at this. 300 miles wide. So as that continues to push its way off towards the west, good chance that we could have some at least low end tropical storm force winds here. And Larry, as we talked about it, with all the rain that we've had, and even though winds will get lighter as they work towards the Charlotte area, that could also lead to some down trees. Absolutely. Down trees, down power lines, all those situations could happen. I want to show you a future cast right now. I'm taking this clock and advance it to 3 a.m. Saturday morning. The bulk of the heaviest rainfall for us, although we could get some showers later today, starts tomorrow. But as you can see from Fayetteville to Wilmington, the Carolina coastline, heavy rain continues to fall tomorrow. This is, this is around uh, 7 a.m. Saturday morning. The rain starts to track towards the area, but that, look at that feeder band of heavy rain coming out of the Carolina coastline. We get into Saturday late in the day, especially as we get towards Saturday evening, the heavy rain tracks in Sunday. It's an all day rain. This is, I think, the bulk of our heaviest rain. Flooding rains will happen on Sunday. The potential for flash flooding. We could see anywhere from maybe on Sunday, anywhere from about four to seven inches of rain right here in the Charlotte Metro. And that continues to fall right through Sunday, late in the day, right through Sunday night and early on Monday morning. Let's get a check on the commute this morning. Here's Rich Roller.
Larry, thank you. A lot that we're hearing from our crews out on the coast that the time to evacuate is over. You can really see that in this Google Maps image. So many road closures out of the coast from Wilmington. We're seeing the same thing all the way down through South Carolina. These red spots showing you the roads are closed. They did reverse a lot of the highways out of South Carolina. Keep that in mind. Highways here locally, though, starting to get pretty busy. It's only 520 on your Friday morning. I know a lot of you still have to get to work or school today. Not school. Most schools closed, excuse me, but you can see very busy. I'll have a look at some incidents when I come back then. Rachel, thanks. We, we've said it before and we're going to say it all morning because it, it's worth noting. The, the storm is moving painfully slow. Right. Painfully slow. And we say that because it means that more time that these cities along the coast are going to be dealing with just devastating rain. We're going to continue our team coverage this morning with NBC's Jay Gray. He is live on Carolina Beach. And Jay, what are the conditions like where you are right now? Hey, Rachel and, and Ben, that's a terrific point because we've been pounded by this storm for several hours overnight now into the early morning, and that's just going to continue. Take a look at the conditions as we talk about it right now. You can see the sheets of rain that are still being pushed by that wind that really has been gusting to extreme measures over the last uh, hour or so. It looks like we're in a bit of a lull, but as soon as I say that, it looks like it's starting to pick up again. So you see that with these storms. It, it has been blowing very hard for the last several hours here. And unfortunately, that's going to continue. This thing moving slow, it's going to linger, and we're going to see this wind and rain. The rain's going to be an issue as well for a day or more here and in other areas along the coast. With that said, uh, what it means is areas that are already uh, seeing some significant flooding problems are going to get more water, more rain. We know that there have been storm surges along the coast of 10 feet or more. That's going to build as well. So Ben and Rachel, it's a tough go now. It's going to continue to be for quite some time. All right, Jay Gray reporting live for us. And, and Jay, it's good to see that you, it looks like you're at least away from some of that wind out there. So just make sure to keep yourself safe out there as well yeah. as your crew. Jay, thank you, sir. Hundreds of cancellations already today here at Charlotte Douglas International Airport going in and out of the airport. What the airport is doing to prepare for Hurricane Florence, that's next on NBC Charlotte.
now out of Wilmington. Winds up to 90 miles an hour and torrential rain. And folks, we are just in the beginning of this. Keep it here all morning long. People across the country trying to travel this weekend are, are certainly feeling the effects of the hurricane. More than a thousand flights have been canceled so far. Several airports, including Charleston, Wilmington, Myrtle Beach, have, have already closed. NBC Charlotte's Hannah Walker is live at Charlotte Douglas Airport. And Hannah, we know we're going to be affected here in Charlotte, but is Charlotte Douglas closing because of this? We well, you know what, Rachel, they're actually having a press conference this morning at 1015 to update folks on what they're doing to prepare. As of right now, the airport's open, but I will say there are over 200 flights canceled going in and out of Charlotte. The board doesn't tell you all of those because this includes flights all day long, and it really makes sense, guys, because most of the flights were coming and going from the path of Florence, Myrtle Beach, Charleston, Wilmington, and all flights canceled because their airports, those airports are closed. Here at Charlotte Douglas, they'll be activating the irregular operations plan this evening. That's moving staff to 12-hour shifts, also activating the airport's incident command center. Center. They've also been doing some checks and balances outside of the airport, clearing storm, dra storm drains, excuse me, and I mentioned they're having a meeting later on in the day at 1015 to tell us what their plan is, but as of right now, the airport is open, guys. Back to you. All right, good to know, Hannah. Thank you. We're in Wilmington where we are still hours away from Florence making landfall, and you can see the effect it's having on this area. And live look now at Myrtle Beach Boardwalk. Our Mark Boyle is there where conditions are changing fast. We know that Hurricane Florence is expected to make landfall between 5 and 8. Much more after the break.
outer bands of the storm reaching the Carolinas overnight and already wreaking havoc. Good morning and thank you for waking up with us on a really important weather day. I'm Rachel Brown and I'm Ben Thompson. Folks, we are just in the beginning of this, but here's what we know right now. Florence downgraded to category one storm, but make no mistake. It is still packing quite the punch. Live look right now from Wrightsville Beach near Wilmington, where the eye of the storm could make landfall anytime between now and 8 a.m. Right now it's creeping along the coastline just a few miles out. Here in Charlotte, we are still expecting severe flooding through the weekend. Take a look at this video coming in overnight from Bell Haven, North Carolina. The Pungo River overflowing, flooding homes and businesses there. We know 200 people have been rescued overnight, about another 150 still trapped in that town. We have full team coverage here in studio and all along the coast tracking the latest conditions. Let's start with Larry Sprinkle. Larry, this storm is devastating. Without a doubt, and, and we're going to see more and more indications of that as the day goes on. And in fact, some of that dramatic video coming in right now. These are the uh, some of the wind gusts we're getting over 80 mile an hour wind gusts at Jacksonville, North Carolina, over almost 70 mile an hour wind gusts at Wilmington, about the same at Cherry Point there near the, the station, the Naval Base wind gusts over the next 12 hours here in Charlotte. We're going to see our wind start to increase in intensity about one o'clock today. We're getting some wind gusts up around 36 miles an hour, 45 to 50 mile an hour wind gusts as we get later in the afternoon into early evening. Once again, the eye of the storm almost ready to make landfall maybe somewhere around Topsail Island, maybe close to Wilmington. Sustained winds right now are 90 miles an hour. You have the high winds, you have the heavy rain, and the storm surge on top of that between about 5 and 11 feet. So you can imagine storm surge. I'm about 6'2". So up here, imagine being a wall of water coming at you at 9 feet. That's amazing. That's why we're seeing the devastation along the Carolina coastline. Some of the rainfall totals already at Moorhead City almost over nine inches of rain more continues to fall power outages a lot of devastation out there let's get the latest on that situation chris mulcahy joins us right now chris yeah larry i'm not even going to show you the power outage map for the coast because it's inevitable already as richard was saying he saw a transformer burst so we're seeing that all along the coast as for us we will see our potential for power outages start to increase as we head through the weekend so this right now is our power outage index at a low Low range at first, but as we add more rain to the ground and even a wind gust up to 30 miles per hour is going to enhance our chance. So we do have about a moderate chance from the Charlotte area over the um, Albemarle. And the reason why is not really because of the wind, believe it or not, it's because of the rain. And here's why. When you have a wind gust of 30 miles per hour, that's just going to rattle the trees a little bit. Dry ground locks those roots down. But when you add more water to the ground, the roots are more susceptible to fall over, especially older trees like what we have around Charlotte. So that 30 mile per hour wind gust that will likely happen in the weekend will put down a lot of trees. Let's head over to traffic to check with Rachel. All right, Chris, thank you so much. Right here locally, if you're driving around this morning, starting to get a little busy just outside of Uptown, you can see 77 at the John Belk, definitely picking up for this time in the morning. But when we really start to see that rain moving through, as Larry and Chris were talking about, let's talk about some of the flash flooding facts you need to keep in mind. If you don't have to be on the road, stay home. Half of flood deaths actually occur inside a vehicle. So you're going to want to avoid bridges altogether. Six inches of water is enough to lose control of your vehicle. 18 to 24 inches enough of fast moving water is enough to carry your vehicle away. Rachel. Rachel, thank you. Right now, the eye of the Hurricane Florence, just a few miles off the coast, we're estimating about 20 miles right now. This is what it looked like overnight in Wilmington. The driving wind and rain leading to devastating storm surge. NBC Charles Richard Devane now live this morning in Wilmington. And Richard, I know you're, you're not too far from the Cape Fear uh, River. I also know up in New Bern, things are serious because of that storm surge. What is it like where you are? Uh, it's definitely intensifying, Ben. And, and I've been standing pretty close to this building, which is buffering me a lot. And you see me toss about, but if I took a couple more steps back, you can just tell how strong this wind is getting. Right now, I'm uh, trying to hold on to my hat. is probably the top priority. Might have to just let it go in a few minutes. Actually wearing protective goggles just for the eyes. This is very strong. We have not made landfall yet, but it is, you can tell that right now, this is getting really intense. Um, one of the things we want to tell you is that, as you mentioned just a little bit ago, we did see a transformer burst. That's one of the things we crews are saying. And, excuse me, I'm going to point this way because I have to, I've been told by some of the crews here, the veteran crews, 
it's best to point in the direction that you're, you're, this wind is coming, just to be careful in case something flies your way. Now, we are paying close attention, we're hunkering down. I'm going to take a couple steps closer just so I can get that protection, but I want to tell you that the wind has intensified, the conditions are getting uh, stronger, we can tell you they're deteriorating, and it's, it's very important right now, we're going to send it back to you. Richard, thanks. Yeah, of course, your, your, your safety, of course, the, the utmost importance for all of us, Richard. Just be safe going for a yeah. little bit. This storm, absolutely massive, as we've mentioned. Uh, take a look at this. We know just the hurricane force winds, just the winds we're talking about, stretching about 80 miles wide. About 75 miles down the coast in Myrtle Beach. People there are already seeing the impacts of Florence. And that is where we find NBC Charlotte's Mark Boyle. He joins us live there. Mark, what's it like where you are? Things definitely changing. Certainly the wind is picking up here, Rachel, but we're not seeing what Richard's seeing just yet. That's still about 45 miles north of where we are here in North Myrtle Beach. But this area has been completely evacuated. There's only a handful of people that stayed. Well, I, I saw a few in this condo building yesterday and I talked to them. They said they wanted to ride this out, but that's not what emergency officials are suggesting, of course, as we've been hearing, because the issue today is going to be this strong wind and the rain in that storm surge. And we showed you at five o'clock, you see that white fence right there just about 100 yards beyond that white fence is the beach and when that storm surge comes up in which it will in just a few hours as we go into the day all of that water is going to rush this direction and cause really some serious concerns for those folks who live here and their homes in this community Mark, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We appreciate that report. We're going to now toss it over to Larry Sprinkle. Larry, give us the latest track. Yeah, we're, we're still looking at this, the intense amount of rainfall and the high winds out there. That's the, uh, the situation that's going to cause, on top of what they already have, all the flooding along all those rivers that you uh, so. that are along the Carolina coastline, the Tar River, the Noose River out there, all those rivers. And you get these winds now gusting over 80 miles per hour. That is a Category 1 hurricane that's going to slam into those communities right there. It's going to do devastation with the wind damage. Of course, obviously, the high surf out there and that wall of water that's anywhere from about 5 to 11 feet in height. It's, it's an amazing situation. Landfall could come within maybe the next 45 minutes to an hour somewhere, possibly over towards Topsail Beach, maybe in that area, maybe close to Wilmington, but you can see the circulation right here. It's barely moving, moving at about five miles per hour. With that slow movement, that just adds all of the rainfall. We're getting some rainfall rates in some of these communities as much as two to five inches per hour. And it's gonna continue to do that. That's why those rainfall estimates anywhere from about 15 to possibly 30 inches of rainfall. As we get to see daylight, we're gonna see some pretty dramatic pictures out there. And once again, I didn't want to show you this, some of the latest on these uh, rainfall totals. This is Moorhead City, almost 10 inches of rainfall. Within the next hour, there could be another two to three inches added to that right there in Moorhead City. Something to think about as we check your commute this morning. Here's Rachel Roller. All right, Larry, thank you. Right by the state line, 77 at Carowinds is where we've seen the busiest commute all week long as many people evacuated out from the coast. They made their way to our area, so keep that in mind. We're still expecting that. However, we're starting to see a couple problems. Right here locally, we just have a stalled vehicle on Clanton Road at Fieldcrest. Out of our area a bit, I do want to show you though because we're starting to see what could be a sign of what's to come. This over by Laurenburg, it's a downed tree right there at McCall Road eastbound. This is something we have to prepare for here locally in the Charlotte area. Those downed trees can cause a nightmare out there on the streets. Rachel. Rachel, thank you. It's 5.39. It's 5.39. This is a live look at Wilmington. Our Richard Devane is there as things continue to pick up. That area, a ghost town, as we wait for Hurricane Florence to make landfall in a couple of hours.
Wilmington. The driving wind and rain leading to devastating storm surge that we keep seeing. We want to go back out to Richard Vane and we mentioned that eye wall, Richard, because the eye wall, of course, has the strongest winds right around it and it's just a few miles from where you're standing. Yeah, I can feel it, Ben, and actually, I, if you could look, I don't know if you can see, but the rain is actually coming down just like this. Parallel, I'm going back. If I walk back a little bit further, is this okay, Stuart? You can see that this wind is really intense picking up. There's trees over in the corner. We're, we're not near those. It's blowing those trees and has actually snapped a couple of branches. I see trees over here waving about. I'm going to continue to look this way because... We want to just be safe. Well, there it goes that. Won't worry about that right now. But what we want to tell you is that you can barely, I can barely hear myself speak. The intensity of this, of this wind has picked up, dumping the rain also. And of course, we're concerned about that storm surge as, as uh, Florence makes landfall. Very difficult situation right here, right now. Pretty intense, guys. So, Richard, go ahead and come a little bit closer for a little bit. It looks yeah, like it's getting. We're gonna come back in. We're gonna sit it back to you. And we'll right. take a quick breather. All right, sounds good. Okay. This is exactly why all week we know our governors, the president, yeah. has been warning people to evacuate. This picture, Richard's live side, is exactly why it's dangerous out there. Yeah, I'm glazed with Stuart Pittman, who's covered, you know, probably 20 hurricanes out there. A photographer. Oh, all sure. of our, all those folks in the field are doing a great job. This is the National Hurricane Center just sent this out. Uh, Florence about to make landfall in North Carolina, causing life-threatening storm surges and hurricane force winds. Catastrophic. Freshwater flooding expected over portions of North and South Carolina. And Larry, the, the, the problem is it's going so slow. slow so slow. And, and I just hate to see that. It's just going to sit there for hour after hour. I mean, we say five miles yeah. an hour. That, that, that's what folks can, yes. can walk to. That's a brisk yeah. walk. If you can imagine that. Let's take a look at the latest statistics on Hurricane Florence. Uh, wind sustained at 90 miles per hour. It's a Category 1 hurricane. It doesn't matter. It's going to cause devastating uh, problems. We've already seen some of the video that will continue to come in. Here's the radar picture. It could be making landfall uh, within the next little while. We'll let you know about that. Of course, the highest winds around the eye wall of the storm. And in the center, it's very calm there. But you can see it's just slamming in the coastline with all that heavy rain. All the way from Ballhead Island to Wilmington, Wrightsville Beach, Moorhead Beach, Topsail, Jacksonville, all the way to Beaufort, North Carolina. Very heavy rainfall. And it's amazing the amount of rainfall they're getting. You can see uh, just to the north of Wrightsville Beach, almost four inches of rain per per hour, per hour. That's how much is raining fall uh, there. You can see uh, just in the north of there, north of uh, Jacksonville, almost three and a half inches of rain per hour that continues to fall. And these rainfall totals are amazing already. Probably in the next uh, little bit, they're gonna add another two inches to Moorhead City. That would be 10, maybe 11, 12 inches of rainfall. Remember the National Hurricane Center making those predictions 30 plus inches of rainfall. That's going to cause a lot of problems out there. Among the many problems, let's find out what the latest is on that situation. Here's Chris Mulcahy. Larry, what's incredible is I want to take a look at New Bern because that has really been a main headline because there's been several rescues there. They got a storm surge up to 10 feet. So far this year, New Bern has had over 47 inches of rain. They're forecasted in surrounding areas to get as much as 30 inches of rain in 48 to 72 hours. Think about that. This is the early part of September. This is all the rain that they have seen for the given year. This is what they usually see all year round. So it's been an above average season. That also leads to more problems because that water is having no problem just flooding the area in general and then on top of that we're talking about rainfall totals we also have to think about storm surge that is not included with the amount of rain that we're going to see as well so that's why our rainfall impacts extreme historic Areas have never seen this much rain, at least in our lifetime. And we are also in that still bold range of a high range, about five to 10 inches. And that's still a lot to cause a lot of problems and some down trees a little bit close to home. I'm gonna send it back to you, Larry. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, in our area, close to Charlotte, we're talking about right in our viewing area, the folks over the, in Pageland and South Carolina, Chesterfield and South Carolina, Rockingham, in that area, that is a tropical storm warning over there. Closer to us is a tropical storm watch. That's around Lancaster all the way down into Chesterfield County there in South Carolina. Something to think about that we could still get some very high winds, very gusty winds, in addition to some extreme amounts of rainfall. Even here in the Charlotte metro area, we could get anywhere from about five 
five to ten inches of rainfall. As we take a look and show you, there's a tornado watch in effect in the eastern part of the state. We're looking at the potential even Charlotte for some isolated tornadoes. There's that track taking it closer and closer to Charlotte over the next 12 hours. I think our heaviest rainfall really happens late Saturday all day Sunday. It will not stop raining. That's why we can certainly see record amounts of rainfall in the Charlotte metro area. This is Sunday morning about 6 a.m. It's just like a train of rain coming right in the air. One band of heavy rain after another. We may see a little bit of a lull and then more rain comes in. It just rains all day. That's why you need to be very safe and uh, think about the potential on Sunday for staying inside. We're encouraging people to you know, use common sense and don't be out in this situation because of the amount of rainfall that's going to cause some major problems problems out there on the highways. As far as rainfall totals, record rainfall, you can see uh, back in uh, 2008, it was August 27th, we had uh, almost eight and a half inches of rainfall in one day. Then you go back to 1997, almost eight inches. So we're probably going to surpass that right here in the Charlotte area. I was looking at some statistics from uh, Rock Hill, South Carolina, and what the National Weather Service is indicating for the folks down there. You could get maybe 10 to 11 inches of rain. That's in Rock Hill in South Carolina. Let's talk about your forecast for today. Temperatures in the mid 80s, then the heavy, heavy rain late Saturday, Sunday, right into Monday, possibly into Tuesday. Tuesday. That's your forecast. Let's get a check on the commute this morning. Here's Rachel Roller. Larry, thank you. And we're taking a live look of 85 at Little Rock Road. Take a look how busy it is before 6 a.m. This not too far from Charlotte Douglas International Airport, of course. So over at the airport, the roads surrounding there. Okay, now inside the airport, it's a different story. 201 flights already canceled. That's in or out of Charlotte Douglas. Anything above 33 miles per hour of sustained winds, that's what's going to trigger those major issues and make more cancellations. But there is a news conference at 1030 with the plans at the airport. We do have a crew there to bring you all of that information. Rachel. Rachel, thank you. It's 549. Live look now at Myrtle Beach Boardwalk as we continue to track Hurricane Florence, a slow moving yet powerful storm. Many calling this the storm of a lifetime. We'll be back after this break.
Rachel, this happening overnight, but still not keeping people from posting things on social media. That's what I was going to say, Ben. The craziest part is that we're really seeing this coming overnight while a lot of people are sleeping. We don't even know what they're going to wake up to just yet, but take a look at this video. It's hard to see because it is, of course, so dark. It's the one that I believe you showed about 30 minutes ago of the Pungo River. So the water kind of crashing right at that house. You can see here right at this window. That looks like the ocean. That's what's so crazy about this video. But again, that's from the river there overflowing. You can see it looks like it's up to the first level of that home, which looks like it's a two story home. Just incredible footage. We're seeing things really all over our area, including this. So you saw the top of this gas station just barely missing that car there. This, of course, in uh, North Top Sail Beach, where yesterday at noon we started to see that storm surge kind of rush through, which is just giving you an indication that this is going to be a fast moving storm with a lot of damage. You continue to see that gas station really just rip apart there. That's why these emergency crews, you guys, are asking that people stay inside and go nowhere near. If you don't have to be in your car, you just, there's no need to be, you guys. And Rachel, we're still an hour out from sunrise, so you can only imagine what those images are going to be like. It, Some people might not even be able to recognize their own homes or neighborhoods. 100%. Rachel, thank you. And as Larry has been mentioning all morning, the impacts of this storm will be felt from Virginia all the way down the South Carolina coast. These are photos we're showing you from yesterday that were tweeted out afternoon by the NC DOT crews. The storm surge already spilling over onto NC 12, and that's on the Outer Banks. Reporter Cole Sullivan is along that same stretch of road in Kitty Hawk. And Cole, this is a very famous, world famous stretch of road that's only two lanes in certain parts. I hear I'm being told that coal is frozen right now. We're going to get back to that report because, as we mentioned, yep. it is a very famous stretch of road that often gets sort of washed away in these storms, and, and it's looking like it's not any dissimilar this yeah. time around. Let's turn over Larry Sprinkle. He's standing by with a look at this thing. And, and Larry, I mean, I can see there behind you this eye just brushing up against the coast there in Wilmington. Yeah, you can see uh, they were so close. In fact, we may get, get a report here shortly that the that uh, the uh, the landfall has been made, maybe just north of Wilmington, maybe up towards top we keep talking about Topsail Beach in that area but you can see the amount of rainfall that just keeps pouring in so you have the storm surge and that storm surge from Ballhead Island all the way up to uh, Beaufort North Carolina that's anywhere from about 5 to 11 feet storm surge is a wall of water that comes in off the ocean pushed in by those tremendous winds so you get this giant rush of water that comes right inland pushes up against a, a lot of those homes are built right on the ocean going to be washed away. I think the pictures we're going to see later today will be more than dramatic. They'll be heartbreaking pictures of what's going on there as we take a look and show you once again the potential for heavy rain here. Now today along the Carolina coastline we're going to see anywhere I think today anywhere from about 15 to maybe 25 inches of rainfall there. This uh, storm system is tracking towards the Charlotte metro. It's going to take a while to get here because it's such a slow moving storm. As you can see from my timeline right there that's tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. we start to see the showers start to track into the area. The heaviest rain is still back to the east, but then we get into uh, Saturday night, early Sunday morning. Heavy rain starts to move into the Charlotte metro area. One band of heavy rain after another. That's why we have the potential right here in Charlotte of seeing anywhere from about 5 to 10 inches of rain. Ben? All right, Larry, thanks. The floodwater is beginning to fill the streets along the coast as this hurricane gets ready to make landfall at any moment. More than 150 people waiting to be rescued in one town. We are tracking the latest with full live team coverage up and down the Carolina coast. Stay with us as our special coverage of Hurricane Florence continues at 6 a.m.
Huntington. The eye wall now on shore. Landfall expected at any moment at this point, folks. Up and down the coast, we are seeing storm surges over 10 feet. Some folks trapped on the roofs of their homes and buildings collapsing. And we are only a few hours into it at this point. Thanks for waking up with us as we track what really is a, a storm of a lifetime. It really is. Some really shocking images to show you coming in from overnight. Take a look at this video on Twitter. This is from Bellhaven. That's just east of Greenville. You can see the water is practically covering this home. And this storm, far from over, folks. Now we have crews up and down the Carolina coast, and we should say, say that they're staying safe and they're trying to stay as safe as possible. We are also taking a look at how local officials are preparing for the impacts here at home which should hit sometime in the next 24 hours. Let's first start with our meteorologist Chris Mulcahy and Larry Sprinkle. And Larry, tell us the latest on this storm. Very latest, once again, eyewall onshore there along the Carolina coastline, uh, pretty closer to Topsail in that area. That's a Category 1 hurricane, and those winds about 90 gusting to 115 miles an hour, still moving very slowly, moving west at about 6 miles per hour, takes inland. This is this afternoon at 2 o'clock, barely moving. It's almost just right on top of Ballhead Island at that time, then takes a track uh, Saturday morning early, still a hurricane just north of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, then moves off to the west and then takes a, tend, uh, tr a little trend to the northwest, and that's when we're going to see the impacts from the Charlotte area with the potential for even tropical storm force winds here. This is a radar picture, as you can see, that eye wall making contact with the Carolina coastline. Winds once again sustained at 90 miles per hour. Heavy rain, gusty winds, light threatening situations right there along the Carolina coastline. So today I look over to Chris Mulcahy with the very latest. Hey, thanks a lot, Larry. And we've been mentioning New Bern a lot as of recently. And the reason why is because there were multiple rescues there and there's more rescues that need to play, take place. People didn't heed the warning to evacuate, and we did have a storm surge as high as 10 feet. It's down to 6, but it will ramp back up fairly shortly. So we're seeing a lot of these storm surge reports as we're jumping around. You can see this one's at 10 feet just south of Minnesot Beach, up uh, to the northeast a little bit, about 6.5 foot storm surge. These water levels will continue to rise, and we keep bringing up rain as well. That's not included in the storm surge, so you could have 20 to 30 inches on top of a 10 foot storm surge and even above that. And the biggest wind gusts I've seen, 99 miles per hour. And with the most recent update, the 6 a.m. one, we were looking at wind gusts at about 120. Now it's 115, but still I think we could have wind gusts well over 100 miles per hour over the next several hours. All right, Chris, thank you. Something that we really heard you guys emphasize and all of our crews, the time to evacuate from the coast over. And we're really seeing that reflected in this Google Maps image. You can see all these road closures out of Wilmington. It's reflected all the way down the coast as well in South Carolina. But our roads here right near South Carolina, 77 at Carowinds, both north and south, getting very busy this morning. Remember, a lot of those evacuees came here. So in our area, not a whole lot of issues, but we do have out in Laurenburg, this down tree could be a sign of what's to come in our area. Just keep that in mind. Rachel. Rachel, thank you. If you're just waking up with us, this storm is causing chaos on the coast. This is a live look from Wilmington right now. The heavy rains coming down all night long. Let's get out to NBC Charlotte's Richard Vane, who is there in the thick of it. Richard, we should say, if you need to step away at any time, just let us know because you are right there yes. where the eye is approaching. Absolutely correct. As a matter of fact, Ben, Rachel, we can tell you we're running over the generator back of power because about five minutes ago, all the power to this area went out. So, our and our friends over the next to see that's how the generator power. I can't even walk. The further I get from the building, the harder it is to walk as that eye is approaching us. This is coming down really heavy, really fast. And you know, I'm going to take a couple steps closer to the building just for safety's sake. That's one of the things we want to make sure that we always do is be safe. One of the things you have to consider is the fact that even as after the heavy landfall, we're really concerned of all of that heavy rain coming down to the city of the Wilmington area. A storm surge, and then of course, the lower trends are now these heavy winds. So there's a lot of stuff that folks in this area are going to be dealing with. Richard, thank you, and it's been incredible to see his live shot change in the past two hours to what it is now. We know that inner wall of the eye is the strongest part. You see it down on the bottom right of your screen as well, periodically, and that's what we actually see him physically going through right now. Right. Of course, his safety always top priority, so Richard, Richard. be safe.
And we're hearing that some of the worst conditions are in New Bern, north, north of Wilmington. It's right at the top of the Noose River. And as you can see, the city is underwater there. Crews rescuing 200 people, but at last check, 150 still stranded. The city tweeting that they are doing their best to get everybody and warning that people might have to climb to their attics for safety. A local news station there in New Bern even forced to evacuate their building during the middle of the broadcast. We have the situation that has developed here at the station, and that is that the water getting close to the building, uh, that the uh, uh, building has been evacuated. No, New Bern does have a curfew in effect until 7 a.m. during the hurricane. And we want to get you to this as well. Just in the past 20 minutes, we've learned a roof of a hotel has collapsed in Jacksonville. This is video from that town. About 70 people there evacuated from that hotel, including babies, kids, and pets. So far, it's early on, but so far we're told nobody was hurt and we're still working to get more information. Again, though, we can tell you a roof of a hotel there in Jacksonville collapsing with folks inside. By the way, Jacksonville, for some perspective here, is about 60 miles north of Wilmington. And we can't stress it enough. This hurricane is massive. It is stretching all up and down the East Coast, and you can see it right here on your map that's on the screen. NBC Charlotte's Mark Boyle, live in Myrtle Beach. Now, Mark, we should tell people, Myrtle Beach about 100 miles south of Wilmington, where Richard is seeing all that action, but this thing's moving so slowly, we're, we're still hours out from you actually seeing the worst of it. Absolutely right, Ben. I was just going to say the conditions here are certainly deteriorating, but we're still on the leading end, at the leading edge there of that storm, but we are now in it. I, if my photographer, Jen, can pull out a little bit, I want to see if you guys can see the, the wind blowing the rain through this area. This is right along the beach coast. This is Ocean Drive. Behind me, about 100 yards, is that beach, and later that storm surge is expected to come here. That storm is still north of where we are, but the conditions will get worse as we go into the day and into the weekend. The power, you see the lights out here still on. They started flickering right around 315 this morning and they cycled through and the lights came back on. So we are certainly going to monitor the conditions. And Jen, if you can zoom back just a little bit and show our viewers at home where you are, we're in between this building. We certainly are going to uh, make sure we're safe. If, it, if it's not safe to be out here, we're going to retreat just a little bit. Uh, there's no question about that. We don't want to put ourselves in danger. We want to bring our viewers at home an idea of what it's like out here as this area is now bracing for the worst as Hurricane Florence is moving on shore. Mark, give us an idea. Have you seen anybody else out and about there aside, of course, from first responders? The only folks that we've seen, I've seen two vehicles, Ben, and it's just been police officers. They do have a curfew in place this morning. So the only people that should be out here are folks that are the media they've allowed as well as the law enforcement in this community. All right, Mark Royal. Mark, thank you. Now take a look at this incredible video from Topsail Beach, North Carolina. Overnight, the winds and rains causing this gas station to collapse. Look, it's even like flying away. Imagine how strong those winds were. The canopy there falling to the ground and blowing across the parking lot. All right, 6.08 almost now. Let's get back to Larry Sprinkle for the latest on this. And Larry, we're talking about this thing making landfall. Explain why that's so key here. Well, Leifold, obviously the eye wall has the highest winds, and that's when you get into that dangerous situation of the eye wall. And the winds sustain now at 90 miles an hour, some gusts well over about 115 miles per hour. There's Wilmington. You can see the circulation right here, but you can see all that rain just smashing into the Carolina coastline. You have the heavy rain, the high winds, in addition to that, the storm surge, all of that is devastation to the Carolina coastline. An unfortunate situation that will continue on and off all day today. As we take a look and show you once again, uh, the actual uh, landfall could be any minute now, maybe near uh, Topsail Island uh, right there along the Carolina coastline. This area right here, uh, its current position is about 10 miles to the east of Wilmington, North Carolina. But all those little communities out there inundated with heavy, heavy rain all the way from Beaufort, North Carolina, right into Wilmington and everywhere in between. Look at some of these rain Rainfall rates per hour. Wilmington, a little north of there, about almost four and a half inches of rain per hour there as you get to almost three inches of that as you get up towards areas around Beaufort, North Carolina. We'll have more updates on that position and what's going to happen in the next several hours right here in the Charlotte area coming up in a few minutes.
Larry, thank you. All right, let's turn over to Rachel Roller. So many of the powerful images we're seeing so far this morning coming from social media. That's right. Take a look. This is in Wilmington right now. You can see these windshield wipers in full force as the rain really is just sliding across the street there. You see the trees blowing. This is from a crew out there. Now, keep in mind, this is where Richard Devane is. You saw how shaky his shot was getting because that's what it looks like. Now, I want to show you another image. This is from yesterday, but I want to show you it because it's daylight. We were all already seeing this kind of storm surge yesterday out there on the Outer Banks. You see that water rush into that beach house, knocking down the wood there, really just going all the way underneath many of these houses, of course, on the beach on stilts. So keep in mind, we're going to have to wait and see until the sun comes up this morning, you guys. It's going to be drastically different from what we're seeing right now overnight. I think it's going to be gut wrenching for sure. All right, Rachel, thank you. Yeah. More than 200 cancellations here at Charlotte Douglas already today. The airport planning a news conference later to explain how they're preparing for Florence. That's next on NBC Charlotte. And as we had to break, here is a live look at Wilmington. Our live team coverage continues in just three minutes. Ports are even shutting down right now. That's right. The FAA warning travelers to check their flight status before heading to the airport. As you can see here, there are dozens of airports that could be impacted by this storm. NBC Charlotte's Hannah Welker live at Charlotte Douglas this morning. And Hannah, they're going to announce their hurricane plan today, right? We're going to get back to Hannah in just a second, but now we're going to check back in with Larry Sprinkle. Yeah, Larry, let's bring you in at this point because I know we're standing by at this point watching to see 
where this thing's going and when it's going to officially make landfall. Yeah, you're right about that, Ben. It's uh, almost there right now. In fact, we're probably going to get alerted to that in the next couple of minutes. It's close to landfall at the moment as a Category 1 hurricane. This is this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Wind still at 85 miles per hour. It's such a slow-moving storm. That is not good for anybody along the Carolina coastline. With those hurricane force winds, the amount of rainfall they get, and the storm surge on top of that. We take you right into early on the maybe late Friday into early Saturday. We start to see that trend as that moves off to the southwest and this is Saturday afternoon 2 o'clock you can see Bennisville South Carolina Florence South Carolina is a tropical storm at that point and then the impact on the Charlotte metro area early Sunday morning 2 a.m. winds still at about 40 miles per hour we're going to start to see those tropical storm force winds even approaching the Charlotte metro area then we get into late Sunday into Monday it takes that turn and heads to the north and that is good news for everybody once again take a look at that radar picture starting to make uh, that uh, eye wall heading right into the coastal communities just about right now about eight miles from Wilmington North Carolina and tracking off, moving very slowly at about five to six miles per hour. The heavy rain continues to fall. A lot of problems with the rivers out there this morning. Let's get the latest. Here's Chris Mulcahy. Yeah, thanks a lot, Larry. And that's a problem with this location. There's so many inlets and rivers around. And Rachel Roller showed you a picture around the Pungo River where water was crashing up to houses, up to the windows even. The major flood stage for this river at Bay Belhaven is four feet. It's at 6.66 feet already, and we haven't even seen the worst of the hurricane, so I would not be surprised if it's up to 10 feet at that point. On top of that, inches upon feet of rain, a couple of feet of rain possible to fall around this area. So that's going to be the worst case scenario for a lot of these rivers. They're going to have historic flooding along it, and as we are zooming out, we're already starting to see tropical storm force winds as far out as Fayetteville. That's how massive this is. The tropical storm force wind zone is about 300 plus miles and the hurricane swath is about 130 miles now. So that has shrunk slightly over the last couple of hours, but we have reports of 90 to 100 mile per hour wind gusts and that's only going to get worse. So uh, again, the rain is the main factor here along with the storm surge. Winds still not great. You saw how Richard was even struggling to stand up out there, but we're seeing a general consensus about 28 to 36 inches of rain possible in these areas that are very flood prone at this point. Larry? Thank you, Chris. You know, it's amazing when you start to see the rainfall rates per hour, how much that they're getting at this current time. Just north of Wrightsville Beach, northeast of Wilmington, four and a half inches, more than four and a half inches of rain per hour. Imagine that. If you get that much at one time in one hour, you take a three or four hour period, you already got 12 inches of rain and that's why the devastation will continue along this coastal communities even around Riceville Beach almost two inches of rain an hour around uh, Masonboro there almost three and a half inches of rain per hour it continues to fall so we got a lot of rainfall already some of those estimated totals anywhere between about five to ten inches already they could get another ten to 20 inches of rainfall. Let's get the latest on the uh, commute this morning. Here's Rachel Roller. Larry, I heard you talking a little bit about the wind we can see in Bennettsville, South Carolina. I want to show you we're already dealing with issues there on the roadways. We have fallen trees right there. SC9 right there, David's Pond Road, not too far in Larnburg, uh, US 15, McCall Road eastbound, another fallen tree. So just keep in mind, this could be a sign of what we may see later on as we really start to get the effects from Hurricane Florence here in the Charlotte area, where we know we are prone to those down trees. Out on the roadways right now though, 77 at Remount Road starting to get busy both directions. A lot of people still have to make their way to work today, so keep that in mind. Ben and Rachel? Rachel, thank you. And we know this isn't just affecting people on the roads. This is affecting a lot of people who have flights scheduled for this weekend. So we want to get back out to Charlotte Douglas Airport. Yeah, the, we're going to show you why. Because right here, these are all the airports where we're going to show you. We can't show you now. But let's go ahead and turn out. There we go. There are, we go. These are all the airports uh, that are being affected by this massive storm. Let's go out to Hannah Walker right now. She's at Charlotte Douglas International with an update. And I know that in the next couple of hours, we're going to figure out exactly what Charlotte Douglas has planned. You know what, we're, this is live TV, folks, so we're going to check it back in with Hannah Welker after this break, but stay with us. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Jesus.
as a Category 1 hurricane. The storm bringing 90 mile per hour winds with the eye hitting right near Wilmington. Areas near there reporting 10 foot storm surges already. A live report from Wilmington coming up in just a few minutes but that hurricane has made landfall. We mentioned that the eye of the storm is sitting there hovering over the city of Wilmington, but there are a lot of other beach towns you probably know nearby that are seeing just the devastating effects. NBC's Jay Gray is in Carolina Beach, just south of Wilmington, and you can see there it is surrounded by water on both sides. Jay, I, I can't even imagine the amount of flooding these people, these places are going to see. Yeah, no, Ben, Rachel, you're absolutely right. This storm making landfall now 10 to 15 miles to the north of where we are putting this island on the bad or dirty side of the storm. I want to give you a look at the conditions which continue to intensify here right now. And you can see sheets of rain being pushed by wind that at times is gusting over 80 miles an hour, sustained uh, much higher than 50 miles an hour. And all of that is continuing to escalate here. We're going to see these conditions uh, work their way through the morning and, and really continue, forecasters say, for a day or longer. So you're going to get this driving rain. You're going to get that storm surge you talked about, which in some areas has reached 10 feet. And we're nowhere near high tide at this point. And these winds that are just uh, really tearing apart this region, that's all going to continue. Some areas already dealing with severe flooding. Uh, this is just the start of what's going to be a very rough go, guys, for a lot of people for a very long time. All right, these beach towns, very familiar to a lot of our viewers. Yeah. They see them every year for years. All right, Jay, be safe. And now we want to get back out to Richard Devane. He is live in Wilmington where things really, really picking up. Absolutely correct, guys. I hope you can hear me. Just in the last little bit when the wind started to intensify, this is one of the stamps that was hanging above head and actually just flew past our photo journalist. So it's okay, you're okay. And then I didn't even really. It's very intense. Power is out in this area. I hope you can hear me. But we can say that it's much really fast in power. It's actually going to take a the hitting lab. Of course, the next thing is what happens next. The rain continues to dump on the area. Also, that storm surge, that's going to be cause a lot of damage. A lot of folks are concerned about what happens. But of course, we all have to wait and see. After storm surge, I'm going to get back to safety. It's going to be too much out here. But I'm going to send it back to you guys. The wind, the rain, the storm surge, all those things we've been talking about for days, we now see unfolding there in Wilmington before our very eyes. Richard losing his footing, seeing a transformer burst in front of him. He's mentioned multiple times that he's looking both ways to make sure debris won't fly and hit him and our crew out there. So we appreciate your reporting. We'll check back in with you guys soon. And as we mentioned, that really is the eye of where everything's happening right now. Just moving on landfall, just in the last few minutes, it's become official. And we know 90 mile per hour winds. That is crazy. We saw that gas station come down and blow away. This is what folks out there, if they haven't evacuated, this is what they're going to be waking up to. And as we mentioned, this is a slow moving storm. So this is going to slowly creep down the coast, down towards the state line, and then on to Myrtle Beach. All right, and make sure you stick with us right here on Wake Up Charlotte. We are getting some incredible in images from the Carolina coast as Hurricane Florence starts its path of destruction. And the storm, it's far from over. Pretty amazing video, live video a minute ago. You could see the spin right there, landfall somewhere between Topsail and Masonboro. You saw Richard Devane in Wilmington. Where he's standing right now, they're probably getting some wind gusts at about 40 miles an hour. Let's take a look and show you. This is the video we're talking about. This is a live view. You can see that spin right there. That, that tremendous amount of rainfall is just slamming into the Wilmington area right now. We're getting some winds gusting well over 100 miles per hour. So it is dangerous out there. Richard's out of the shot and uh, we'll be safe. More on what's going to happen there and right here right after the break.
Wilmington, there's Jacksonville, North Carolina, Ballhead Island, Beaufort, North Carolina. Landfall somewhere, maybe around Topsail, maybe in Wilmington, but it's already made landfall. There's the eye of the storm right there. The highest winds were in that eye wall right there. And you, and you saw Richard Devane standing out there in the middle of that. They were probably getting winds gusting well over 60 miles an hour where he was. And that continues to be a big source of, uh, of well, in fact, there's, there's the latest from Wilmington. Winds gusting at 76 miles per hour right now. That's hurricane force wind gusts in Wilmington. Winds gusting at 70 miles per hour in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Around Cherry Point of that area, 68 mile per hour wind gusts. So something to think about as we take a look at a bigger view. Winds continue to be hurricane force right there along the Carolina coastline. In our area, we're getting some winds gusting around 31 miles an hour. Greensboro winds gusting to 24 miles per hour in Charlotte. So winds gusting to about 24, 25 miles per hour now. For us locally, heavy rain, localized up to 10 inches of rain. Uh, down trees, wet soil, 30 to 40 mile an hour winds, isolated tornadoes. More on what's going on in the area. Let's go over to Chris Mulcahy. Chris? Thanks a lot, Larry. And just before we showed you that graphic, I know it was 76 mile per hour gusts in Wilmington. It was around 91. And the biggest one I've seen so far this morning was 99 miles per hour. But it depends where you are. We were talking about the eye wall, and it's been slowly moving its way off towards the west. That is now nipping Wilmington and surrounding areas. It's peak winds, about 80 to 90 miles per hour sustained. Gusts at about 100 to 115 miles per hour as the most recent observations. And outside of that, we have the hurricane force winds. Low category one, about 74 plus, with gusts still getting up to about 90 miles per hour. But it's these winds that are going to be affecting us even once the hurricane winds drop off. 39 miles per hour. We've had gusts over 40 miles per hour already reported to around Fayetteville. Let's head back to the desk with Rachel and Ben. Chris, thanks. Overnight, we got our first look at really the power behind this hurricane. Take a look at this video from Riceville Beach. You can see the strength of that wind. And now it's even worse. NBC Charlotte's Richard Devane is nearby in Wilmington. And Richard, what's it like where you are now? Oh, I mean, I'm going to turn my back as I walk a little bit. Because I want to tell you that it, I can barely walk a straight line. The winds are intense and the thing to note is that this is a category one. They're still packing a massive punch. This is the reason why emergency officials had told everybody when we went from a four to a two, people started saying, oh, it's going to be okay. This is the reason they did not want people to stay here, try to ride it out. They evacuated the beaches. They evacuated the Carolina Beach and, of course, Wrightsville Beach, which is about eight miles up the road. That's why they asked people to for I, can do I don't know if you can hear me. I can barely stand up. And Richard, and if you can hear it's us. Important to note, I'm going to walk a little bit closer so I can see some of this building. Yeah, come, Richard, say, come closer. Get some shelter from, why, from that. that so it's not safe. Uh, we're going to give you a warning like that. One of the things that everyone is concerned about is the devastation that will be left behind. Just before we actually came out here, before the winds picked up, we saw a ceiling fan fall. We saw signs being blown over. We saw trees uprooted. So those are the types of things that people will be facing. Of course, we know there's a massive damage to the homes, and all of this will be found out. But of course, after one final leaves the area, that's the story here. The Back uh, all right, Richard, come, come, come closer, get, get some protection there from, from that wind. We should say, if you're wondering where Richard is at right now, he's downtown Wilmington, not too far from the Cape Fear River. Um, but all of this unfolding right there, where so many people also live as well. Definitely, and we know this storm is a slow-moving storm, so it's expected to sit on top of that area for hours. Richard, thank you for that report. New Bern, North Carolina, seems to be one of the hardest hit spots so far. It's right at the Noose River. I'm officials telling us they've rescued 200 people people so far, but still 150 others are stranded at last check. The city telling people to climb to the second floor of their homes or even the attic, maybe even the roofs to escape the floodwaters before rescue crews can get to them. And just south of the North Carolina border, coastal towns are dealing with storm surges and some strong winds. It could get worse as this massive hurricane makes its move. NBC Charlotte's Mark Boyle now live in Myrtle Beach for us this morning. And Mark, Give us an idea. We know you're about 100 miles south of where Richard was just standing. So what, what's the difference where you are? Hey, I'm with uh, NBC Shaw. Is everything going OK out here? Yeah, everything's yeah. good. You guys experiencing any issues so far? We're just uh, want to check in with you guys. 
Not yet. Everything's Not yet. good. Okay, excellent. Um, so this is an emergency uh, uh, official right here, just basically doing some checking of how things are going up here in North Myrtle Beach, probably wondering what I'm doing out here. So right now there is a mandatory curfew in place that may be, in fact, what he's doing, making sure people are in place. So right now the, the wind is picking up in this area. It's not raining like it is where Richard Devane is, but that's expected to change shortly. As the sun's coming up, it's hard to see, but I'm looking. It's incredible. You can see these clouds whipping around in this circular motion here and about 100 yards behind where I'm standing is the ocean. We do expect the storm surge to really pick up later today and the conditions are only expected to get worse as we go into the afternoon here and throughout the weekend in North Myrtle Beach. We'll keep you updated how the conditions are and if they deteriorate in this community throughout the weekend. I'm Mark Warpoint live in North Myrtle Beach. We'll send things back to you Ben and Rachel. Yeah we're still hours away from still the hitting hours, folks right. there in Myrtle Beach. Mark, thanks. Now we're going to head back up the coast now to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. That area has seen massive storm surge as early as yesterday. You can see it in some of these photos. And today, folks, today it could get a lot worse there. We have Allie Weatherton who is joining us live in Nags Head with the latest on the conditions there. Conditions continue to change here. We're in Nags Head at the Jeanette's Pier. I want you to take a look at what we're seeing right now. You can see those waves crashing against the pier, and it's been like that for several hours now. All last night, I heard those waves crashing against the pier. My balcony door actually opened because the wind was so bad. Now, almost every place here in Outer Banks is closed. The gas stations are closed. The grocery stores are closed. Deer County is still, still under a hurricane warning, and there's still a mandatory evacuation. Now, these ex conditions are expected to get worse in the next couple of hours. We're reporting in Nags Head, North Carolina. Back to you. Allie, thanks. This hurricane has already knocked out power to thousands of people across the Carolinas, and Duke Energy estimates it will cause anywhere from one to three million outages when all is said and done. It may also take weeks to get the lights back on. That is why Duke has brought in extra workers from the Midwest and from Florida. Right now it has 20,000 crews ready to respond. Also, we should tell you the Red Cross. It has 1,500 volunteers here in the Carolinas, as well as 129 shelters open in three states. Let's bring in Larry Sprinkle and Larry. We really, uh, we don't want to give people here in Charlotte a fall sense. Hopefully by them watching these live pictures we're showing, they're getting a sense of how serious this thing it is. It is, and we've got to take this seriously, especially over the next 24 to 36 hours as we get to uh, late Saturday afternoon through the evening, especially on Sunday, the rain yeah. starts. Uh, the latest on the uh, hurricane, it's uh, pretty amazing, has made landfall. Landfall has been made, wind still sustained at 90 miles per hour. This is a very, very slow moving storm system, moving west at only about six miles per hour. The longer it sits there, the longer it stays moving at that rate of speed, that's more devastation along the Carolina coastline. Unfortunately, with the high wind sustained at 90 miles an hour, that can do a lot of damage. So we have been talking about what the hurricane force winds could do. That's a strong hurricane. If you were uh, in Charlotte during Hurricane Hugo, our winds were about 70 miles an hour. All the damage, all the trees that went down. Something to think about as we take a look at the scan from the first one Doppler radar down in there in, in Wilmington. You see the heavy bands of showers from Jacksonville, North Carolina, to Wilmington, to Ballhead Island, and that's just pounding those little coastal communities right there with anywhere already from about 7 to 11 inches of rainfall. There's the eye right there. The highest winds in a hurricane are along the eye wall and that will continue to pound that area with tropical storm force winds on the outlying areas up to 90 miles uh, of coverage for those hurricane force winds. Getting winds gusting over 75 miles an hour at Wilmington, about 70 at Jacksonville, 68 at Cherry Point. That's the way it looks as far as the hurricane. Let's see how the traffic situation is this morning. Here's Rachel Waller. Actually, Larry, instead of traffic, I'm going to show you some images, you guys, that we're just getting in. You guys were talking about the issues in New Bern. Keep in mind, New Bern, a town with under 2,000 people of a population, and we were talking about people being trapped on their roofs, trapped in their attics, and water rescues underway. We're starting to get the first images from that. If you look closely, you see this is a school bus that's out there trying to rescue people using that school bus in New Bern. If we can transfer to the next picture I want to show you now, this was yesterday in New Bern. That's the mall parking lot. You see how high that water 
water is. Again, yesterday when we didn't even have official landfall of this master monster storm and then there's trees down in our area. If we could advance one more time, you can see this is already starting to happen across the region. We've seen it a lot in South Carolina, kind of close to Bennettsville, you guys. So we're following that because that's kind of a sign of what's to come here in the Charlotte it's area. It's so important to point out too, New Bern, I mean, it has the two rivers, but it's inland. Exactly. It, it's mm -hmm. it's not, it's 30, 30 it's miles from the, the actual coast. coast. It's, it's crazy to see this. You know, statewide, there's already over 300,000 power outages. Wow. And I also think it's important to point out, we don't want people getting into their own vehicles trying to make these water rescues. Leave no. that to the professionals. Absolutely. Absolutely. Rachel, thank you. All right, live pictures right now. This is from Wilmington. Coming up after the break, we're going to go live there on the ground once again, where, as you can see, some of the streets are flooded and the storm, the storm just getting started. And as we go to break, make sure you join us online. Our social media pages filled with photos and videos and live streams of this storm of a lifetime as it unfolds. And also, a good idea to go ahead and download our NBC Charlotte mobile app. As you heard from Larry, this thing is headed in our directions. You want to be weather aware. If you know your geography, you understand it's going to be making a slow beeline down the Carolina coast, going from Bald Head Island, Oak Island, Holden Beach, Ocean Isle, which you see right there, onto Sunset Beach before it reaches the South Carolina state line. And we're keeping a close eye on all the cities along the coast this morning. And some experts saying by the time this storm is done, 
it could be a very different coast. We want to get to our own Evan West. He's been driving through Wilmington this morning in our Chevy Storm Trekker. And Evan, I'm curious. I know we were just with Richard a couple minutes ago. He's in downtown Wilmington. Very low visibility where he yeah. is. So I'm kind of surprised you're able to be driving right now. This is a much different perspective, and I want to clarify that I'm writing. We've got Mike Hansen behind the wheel to my left, but this is a much different view than what you've seen from Richard, who's on the ground with Stuart Pittman. I'm going to show you our dash cam right now. This is Hurricane Florence right here. We heard Chris talk about those 90 mile per hour wind gusts that have blown through. We've certainly seen some of those, but over the last hour or so, Things have really ramped up here. The visibility is low, but in the Storm Tracker, which is a big, big Chevrolet Suburban, uh, we've gotten a unique perspective and also been able to stay dry, which is nice because we know we'll be out in the elements later today. But right now, this is Gray Street. We're at an intersection. We've seen a lot of trees on the ground already, some smaller trees, as well as you're actually looking at one right here. And I should note that this tree is in front of the Waffle House that we thought was going to be open the entire time but they've closed down so for those of you who are familiar with the waffle house index used by fema um, they are closed right now this is how serious a storm hurricane florence is so we're on front street which is basically uh, in the middle of downtown uh, wilmington and we have a few cars on the road most of them are storm tracers uh, there's a big reason why officials told everyone to get the heck out and this is it right here uh, we understand that there have been a lot of breaking and entering uh, new brunswick Sh county sheriff's office has responded to a lot of felonies they tweeted out everybody hunker down stay safe lock your doors this is a big reason why we're going to continue to uh, roll around the streets here as long as they're safe to gather some more content for you guys but for now reporting live and Wilmington. This is Mike Hansen. I'm Evan West. We'll send it back to you guys. And Evan, I want to ask you, knowing that you're out and about in Wilmington right now and that you're downtown, not too far from the Cape Fear River, not too far from the ocean either. We've talked so much about storm surge. Specifically, we know overnight Newburn being hit with floodwaters up to 11 feet in some cases. Are you seeing out and about? Are you seeing any of that storm surge yet? No storm surge yet, Ben, but I can tell you that it's hard to see anything, especially if we're traveling in certain directions. It's just rain in the face. So um, I do want to, you know, we just sent Pierre, our track, our satellite truck operator, to the satellite truck, which is in a parking garage. Uh, he's probably going to just kind of be in standby mode to move that in case the water levels rise. We actually spoke to the Wilmington mayor uh, late last night who says, you know, with all this rainfall that they're anticipating, there's no doubt that the Cape Fear River is going to crest at some point, not anytime soon. He said probably Tuesday, but we do know that the National Weather Service projecting some 40 inches of rain here in Wilmington. Reminder, a great reminder, Evan, that this is not a one day deal. This is going to go on for days and days and days. Evan, Evan yeah, Evan West and Mike Hansen reporting. Evan, thank you. And now we want to get back over to Larry Sprinkle for a look at what's the latest on this storm. Yeah, it made landfall, Category 1 hurricane, stays there, very slow moving storm system. Wind sustained at 90 gusting to 115 miles per hour, moving west at only 6 miles per hour. Between now, 2 o'clock, you can see this afternoon, still Category 1 hurricane. That's Ball Head Island, almost right on top of it, not that far away. It starts to track off moving west-southwest, takes a little bit of a turn near Florence, South Carolina. Tomorrow afternoon, 2 o'clock, winds at 50 miles per hour. That's a tropical storm. Then takes a turn moving a little bit to the northwest, south of uh, Lancaster, southwest of Lancaster, South Carolina. That's Sunday morning at 2 a.m. and then heads off to the northwest. So it's, I think Sunday morning, that's where we start to see some really gusty winds in the Charlotte area, some very heavy rain. Now, over the next 12 hours, wind gusts locally, 41 mile an hour wind gusts at 5 o'clock, 45 at 8 o'clock. So I think later today we start to see the higher wind gusts today in the Charlotte metro. Right now, look at these wind gusts, 76 mile an hour wind gusts in Wilmington, 70 at Jacksonville, 68 at Cherry Point. So that's why storm surge, heavy rain, gusty winds, all of that causing a devastating situation along the Carolina coastline. What else is going on out there? Let's get the latest on that situation. Here's Chris Mulcahy.
Thanks, Larry. And I want to make another point of those wind gusts. Those are certain observation points. If you were to put, say, an anemometer right on the beach, well, most likely it could blow away if it's not hungered down right. But we're getting some wind gusts as high as 99 miles per hour, and I'm still waiting for new reports to come down. But right now, it's almost too treacherous to really get those reports. Storm surge, that's going to be the biggest thing. And all of this red that you're seeing down the coast, that is talking about nine foot plus storm surge, and that's not even including the rain. And I've been looking at a bunch of high tide times. A lot of us are at low tide. So that means that high tide still isn't going to be in effect until noon to four o'clock. So that's only going to make matters worse. Wilmington almost completely covered in red. And you can also see that as I glide down the coast, we are just seeing this everywhere. So that's really something to mention. And you can see the highest storm surge usually in this quadrant of the storm. The strongest winds. Richard is right there, but still significant winds will continue to line up and batter the coast through the morning heading into the afternoon. Larry. Yeah, thank you, Chris. That uh, that radar picture is amazing. You can see the territory covers. We got a wide view here to show you the extent of the heavy rain that's occurring. And most of that really, unfortunately, is there in that southeastern corner of North Carolina. That's over there. If you think of Wilmington, North Carolina, you think of over towards areas around Moorhead City, up towards Jacksonville, North Carolina. The heavy rain continues to fall there. We zoom in and show you that. I have the storm. Yes, there it is right there. The highest winds around the eye wall. There's a little bit of calm situation inside the eye, uh, the eye of the storm. As we zoom in and show you right now some of those uh, rainfall totals per hour. Pretty close to Wilmington. Almost four inches of rain an hour. That's the way it looks as far as the weather. How does it look as far as your traffic? You know, Larry, it's kind of an eerie shot outside of Uptown right now. You can see the Charlotte skyline kind of on standby for Hurricane Florence. We're seeing the crazy images out on the coast from our crews, but right now, 77 at the John Bell. Traffic is starting to pick up across our area. Keep that in mind. We haven't had a whole lot of issues, which is something we can be thankful for as far as your drive times. If you do have to get to work today, you can see out of Rock Hill, you're up to speed. Out of Kannapolis, same deal. The factor in the fact that there are way more people on the roads is those of evacuees came here. We have much more on Hurricane Florence right after the break. Stick with us.
Carolina, the storm hitting right near Wilmington a short time ago. This is a live look there on the ground. Up and down the coast, though, we are seeing storm surges of 10, even 11 feet in some cases. About 300,000 people without power at this point. And officials say that number could climb into the millions. And in the city of New Bern, hundreds were trapped. Rescues currently underway even as we speak. And we want to get one more check of that other shot from Wilmington. Our reporter Richard Devane is there. He is safe and he is taking shelter. He's going back and forth, but you can see just how bad it is. We're going to check back with him later today when we hope things will calm down just a little bit there. But here's a timeline of what we can expect here in the Charlotte area. You might see some rain and feel the winds picking up tonight. Well, the worst of the rain won't be here until Saturday night into Sunday. That's when we could see those flash floods here in the Charlotte area up to 10 inches of rain. And don't forget to download our NBC Charlotte mobile app so you can get updates on the go. And even if your power goes out, we'll also be posting up to the minute information on our website, WCNC.com and on our social media pages. Terrible situation, horrible hurricane out there. As for us, it's going to be a day with uh, kind of breezy conditions. Not too bad today, but it all goes downhill tomorrow, especially tomorrow night. Heavy, heavy rain. Heavy rain Saturday night. That continues all day Sunday with flooding rain possible. Monday, more showers and heavy storms are possible. We get any sunlight. We could see a couple isolated tornadoes as well. Larry, the, the hurricane over Wilmington right now from here, where does it go? It starts tracking a little bit to the west, southwest, and the takes a slow move maybe just north of Myrtle Beach today. Yeah. All right, keep it here on NBC Charlotte. Today's show has crews fanned out across the coast with the very latest information. And we're going to be doing live cut-ins every half hour. Stay with NBC Charlotte.